Hello there, I'm Dave Allen, I'm good and geeky, and do you know what? The terminal is getting sexy. Well, I suppose for most users it's not very sexy because most users don't tend to use the terminal. But for us geeks, it's sexy. And it's getting sexier because we've got a new application coming out called Warp. And I've been trying it out and I like it. Up till now I've been using iTerm as a replacement for the terminal that comes with the Mac Apple systems. And I've I like iTerm, it's good. I've been making it look better by using the power level 10k on the command line and that looks good. But um, Warp does things a whole lot better. I won't get power level 10k on there, but I've got other things which make it worthwhile changing over to use Warp instead of iTerm. So let's get into it now and see what we're going to do to get Warp installed and then what we're going to do to start using it. Okay, so here we are first of all in the browser I'm using brave browser which I think is the best browser out there and we've got some choices here to install it and we can do this download now which we'll is click on here and we can download it and get a DMG file and that will be able to be installed same as anything else you just do a bit of a copy across to the applications folder and you're away or if you want to you can use brew install warp um, but you have to have homebrew installed because it only works on the Intel one so for most people it's going to be a lot easier just to download now and go ahead with that and it's pretty easy so as they say in their websites warp is fast blazingly fast even and it's much better to use because it's designed from the ground up and it's acting like a modern terminal and it's got things in there which distinguish it from using things like iterm it works with popular shells like Bash, ZSH and Fish. I use ZSH, that's the one that comes standard with Apple these days. And I've had no problems with it so far. It even works with Oh My ZSH, which is good. It doesn't work with Power Level 10K, which is a way to make your command line look better. But I'll make do without that until it gets added. I'm sure it'll get added at some point in time. So here we are in the warp terminal and I've got it set up. So I've got a marble background to it and it's uh, really sort of looking nice these red parts here is where i've done something and it's not giving me any output like a little bit of customization and you'll notice that it's split up into areas like this area here this area here these are what they call blocks so let's have a look and see what we can do with changing these things first of all now the best way to do anything here is use command p and then we can open the theme picker and then you can choose something like um, jellyfish or koi and the one I was using was Marmel. I started off with using this one here called Dark. It's okay. Uh, a lot of people like this one called Dracula. Let's leave it as Dracula for a little while. I'm changing back to the one I had earlier later. So let's uh, use that one there. Click on this tick mark down here and we're back in business. And we've got the warp working there with the Dracula theme. The command line is much better because it works as a proper text editor. So if you've got text in there, whatever text you've got in there and so on, if I wanted to select this bit here because I've made a mistake, then before what I'd have to do is I'd have to move across like that and then go and get the uh, mistake out of it. Okay, and make it right. But now what I can do is, if I want to get that word there, I can actually use the mouse here, and double click on that text and I've got it selected. I can delete it, I can put something else in there. It's got color coding in there as well. So when it's got a command in there that it recognizes, like cat for instance, it puts that in green. So that's kind of nice to know. So if you put something in there and you put it in and it's wrong, it'll come up with some options to see what you might want to put in there. Um, it also does things like if you've got aliases set up in your ZSH config file, I've got one in there called ZCon, and it started filling it in already, as you notice at the bottom there. It's, uh, and this, this actually tells me what the ZCon alias means and what it does. So it's an alias for NVIM, tilde forward slash dot zsh if i press this now that opens up in neovim and it's all ready for me to start doing any editing in there and whatever else we're not going to show you how to use neovim at the moment but it's there anyway so to get out of this a lot of people find it difficult to get out of him but it's actually really quite easy you do uh, escape if you're in insert mode so for instance let's say i'm done i've done some editing with this here and i'm in insert mode so i'll just uh, that there so you see down the bottom there it's in insert mode i'll do escape and then i'm going to do colon if i've done anything where i've actually made some changes I'll do w and then q if i haven't made any changes or anything i just want to get out of it and leave it as i just do q and we're back in the terminal again 
So put Lumos in there. This is a, an alias for exa-alh. And this shows me all my hidden files in a folder. And I've got the colours in there as well. So these colours here come in from exa, I think maybe from ozsh as well. So I've got That's for the really geeky ones amongst us. It's got artificial intelligence in there. Let's get some artificial intelligence going. I can just use control and uptick on that there to get at it. But I can also get it from command P. And let's say I want to search for something. So um, let's say I want to do some copying of files. So this is a search going on now and it's going to give me some suggestions. And if I want to do some copying of files, it tells me that I'd use CP, file one, file two, and I can copy files that way. And if I want to input the commands, I can do command and enter, and it will input the command, or I can click on this pink button over here. So let's do uh, command and enter. And as you see, it's put that in there for me, and then I can go in there and make changes as necessary. So I would actually have to start putting in there like ID underscore IRSA, that's one of them. And then I've got this one here, I can add that as well. And it's actually sort of getting those file names from the folder that we're looking at or the directory that we're looking at. So I want to copy those and put them into, um, say, for instance, a documents folder. It's tilde, that one there, and then go to documents directory. So that now will put them into the documents directory. Now, if I go into that documents folder, we'll be able to see those files in there. So I'm going to uh, do uh, Z because I'm using Zoxide instead of the normal command. So I do Z. Then I'll do uh, tilde, forward slash, uh, documents, change that folder, and then I can do the ls command, and I can show you, and those files there, the ones I've just copied into that folder. I can do uh, rm to remove directory entries, and actually get the uh, folders, the, get the files I want to get rid of. So id rsa file, and also I want to get the other one there, um, id and RS pub. And I can delete both of those files. Press enter, do the ls command again, and as you can see now, those files are gone. So we're learning a few Linux commands while we're doing this as well, while we're looking at warp. Now then, we've got blocks. This here is a block. Um, this is a block. Didn't get any output out of one there, that's why it's colored pink or red. This is a block. This is a block. What you can do with these blocks is that you can go over to this side over here and I can uh, bookmark the block so it's easier to scroll to, easier to get to it. And then I can also do things like go to this uh, copy command. I can copy the output. I can copy both. I can copy the prompt. Um, I can copy the working directory. Let's uh, copy the working directory. I can show you that. So let's copy that there. Let's go down to the bottom of this one here, and that's the working directory of what I was in. So, um, for instance, if I'm uh, wanting to change there, I can do Z, and then I can do Command V, and that will allow me to change into that particular folder. So I'm now I'm in uh, .ssh. I can do uh, ls. It just shows a list of the files there without any extra information. Now we've got workflows in this here. Let's go look in workflows. I can't remember the uh, keyboard shortcut for workflows, but I can do Command P again. Let's start typing in workflows. The keyboard command I'd want to use for that is Control Shift and R. But let's press Enter on this one here. And this here is giving me some choices here that I can use. So we've got all workflows. I can do a search and look find what I'm looking for. So if I'm looking to, for something to do with Git. I can start typing in git there and then go through these things here and find which git command I want to use. So I can clone a git repository with specific SSH key and user or I'll create a new git remote branch. All I've got to do is put that in there. And as you can see, I've got it set up so that it's git checkout dash B and then branch name. So I've got to just get rid of those there and the branch name. Maybe I'll put a new branch name in there like hello world. That's what we always put in there. So that's a new thing in there. I can press enter now and it'll run those two commands. So there's a whole pile of stuff in there that you can choose from. 
uh, no workflows found. I can create my own workflows. I haven't found how to do that, but we can do it. Um, we've got SSH stuff in there. And something I was doing earlier was keygen on the host computer, which is this one. Then I was doing SSH into another computer and I could see what was going on there and have two things up at the same time. How to do that? Well, if I do Command and D, I've got two panes open in this tab here. I can also actually have another tab open. So in this tab here is something different. So I've got to put something in there, just uh, Lumos again, so I can see what's in there. So that's in one tab there, look. Then I go into this other tab, I've got something else going in there. So if I wanted to do this one here, SSH keychain, that was what I was doing earlier. And as you see, I've got this popping up underneath here, which is the actual command that I used earlier. So if I press the right key now, it'll put that in there, and that'll gonna that will generate a new key for me. So I was doing that over there, and at the same time I was uh, SSH'd into another computer. I've got another computer called Mel, which I can SSH into, so let's do M-E-L. And that is an alias for SSH spondicious at melisandra.local, so I can click enter on that now. And that will start up my shell. So that's got me into the other computer there, so I can go into this computer and do stuff. So if I do LS in this one here, as you see, there's lots of lot more files in there for me to uh, directories and files for me to look at in there, and then I can change folder in here, so I can do uh, Z uh, SSH, which is where I was at before. Um, change folder there, and now I'm going to have a look see what's in there. Let's do LL. So these are all the files that I've got in there. So what I did was is I used another command over here. So after I'd, after I made the uh, new key. What I wanted to do, I wanted to send that key over to the computer, which is over on the right hand there. So what I did was, is I did um, SC, SCP. Okay, so it's an SCP, and this is the command that I used. Copied this key here, and it sent it across to the other computer, and it called it newkey.pub. I'll do that again just to show you. So let's call it newkey1.pub, and press enter. And that sent that key across to the other computer, which I'm logged into here and um, connected to by SSH. If I do LL now, as you can see in there, new key one dot pub is in there. That is the key that I've just sent across to the other computer. How cool is that? So let's go into NeoVim and uh, work on a file. So I'm going to create a file. So let's do touch. Uh, we'll call it hello.md. So let's go into that there. So here we are in NeoVim again. Uh, so I press the A key so I can insert. Now I'm going to put some stuff in there. Just putting any old rubbish in there at the moment because I want some empty lines in there. I want to show you something. Okay, so that'll do. So let's press the escape key, come out of the insert mode. Let's do this to get out of it. So I'm going to um, colon, right, and quit. Okay, so now I can cat that and have a look and see what I've got there. Look, so do cat. And this one I want here is hello.md. So it's suggesting the file for me to look at already. Look, I've only got to press the right arrow key and I'm into it. So now it shows me what I've got in the file there. So you can see I've got hello world, hello world again, test, all that stuff in there. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to do some manipulation of this file. And I know that there's a uh, something in workflows. So let's go to workflows. Let's do um, control shift R to get into that there. And I want to do file manipulation. So this one here, file manipulation. I want to delete empty lines in the file. So let's put that in there. And the file name is uh, hello.md. And all I've got to do now is press this. And you can see this here is what's in that file, but it's got all of the empty lines taken out. Now the actual file itself is still the same as it was. This, this just takes it out in the terminal in, in warp. So in the command line here. So if I actually want to get that and put it into another file, or put it wherever else, then I can do that. So I can do that just by going to this over here and I can do a copy output. So I've got a copy output and then go into drafts, for example, put this into another file here. I can do command V and paste that in there. And as you can see, it's in there ready to look at. So now what I'm going to do, is I'll just show you in the markdown preview. And that's what it's in. Like looks like in Markdown Preview because I haven't got any uh, space in between the lines. That's why these are all showing on one line there. So if I go back into this again now and I do the cat again, 
So do Cat of Hello World. You can see the actual initial file that I started with there that I did the uh, deletion of the uh, empty lines. It's still the same as it was before. Anyway, as you can see, blocks are wonderful. Blocks are really useful. So you can get these blocks and do things with it and you can bookmark them to be able to get back to them. You can do this here with you go into copy output, copy both. Let's copy both in this one here. So what we've got, copy both. Let's go into draft again, my text editor. We'll do select that and get rid of it. Then I'll do command V and you can see it's uh, got the uh, command in there which is ls, and then it's got, this here is the output from that ls command. So if you need to get a list of um, files in text form from the command line, then you can do it this way. So if I want to do find there within this block here, I want to find, uh, let's say, Argonaut. So I've got A in there. So that's a way of finding things in there. I'm finding in selected block. I can do it as a case sensitive search if I want to. I can do a regex toggle, regular expressions, another good and geeky thing. Have you seen my video about regex? Have a look for it. You'll learn a few things. Let's do command and D. Let's get another pane open. And this one here, if I want to close that one down there, let's, uh, I can do exit and that will close that pane. So I do close current session, that close everything. I can do close tabs, I can close other tabs. So let's close other tabs. Let's do that one in the other tab that I had available there was, uh, it's gone. That's what I can do with panes. That's it, activating panes. I can resize panes so I can move the divider down. Um, split pane down. Let's have let's do that one there. So that's split the pane in two. This is something you can do in Tmux. You can split the um, window or the tab into different panes like this so you can have more than one command line open. It's extremely useful to be able to do this at times. Shift, Command and Enter. So that's uh, got that pane large. But the other pane is still there, but it's actually been minimized. So I do the same again and put it back to as it was. Command P, open the theme picker and uh, go back to the template I had before, which was marble. So there you go. So this is Dave Allen. Time for me to say goodbye now. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye bye now.